Good morning, friends, and welcome to the pre-market view. U.S. markets close almost flat uh, as uh, there is a status quo maintained by the Fed and uh, no mention of the tapering as yet, and it's entirely going to be data dependent. So the markets were flat, and uh, even 10-year bond yields continues to remain around 2.59%. But overall, for the month of July, uh, U.S. markets were up anywhere from about 4 to almost about 6%. Also, European markets closed with marginal gains, uh, no major data points. Uh, and today morning, when we look at the Asian markets, most of them are up anywhere from 1 to almost 1.7%. The Nikkei is up 1%. Shanghai is up almost about 1.7%. And even Hang Seng is up almost about 1.2 to 1.3%. Also, we are seeing some recovery in the emerging markets currencies. So, uh, yesterday after a week opening, there was some recovery in the rupee. But uh, today morning, it looks like we are going to have some respite on the rupee front. Though the overall sentiment continues to remain uh, negative for the rupee, given the kind of uh, gap of uh, almost about $80 billion that we have in the current account deficit. And by most of the data points, uh, it is unlikely that we are going to have that kind of capital inflows in the next about four to five months. So the overall scenario doesn't look too great for, for rupee uh, as such. Uh, in terms of uh, flows, friends, FIs were net uh, bias in the cash market to the tune of about 140 crore, and the domestic institution for sellers to the tune of about 130 crore. So no major uh, flows uh, to talk about. And in the index futures, however, FIs were net sellers to the tune of almost about 1132 crore. Back home, our market started off on a weak note with pressure across uh, the mid caps and the banking stocks particularly. But uh, in the last uh, one and a half to two hours of trade, there was some recovery in the oil and gas pack. Uh, some of the telecom names after the Bharti numbers actually spiked up about 5 to 8 percent. And also we had seen uh, some recovery in the banking names. But the overall sentiment continues to remain uh, Week. On that note, let me invite Sadhana to take us through important f and cues, data and strategies that we can have in the f and markets. Good morning friends. Let's have a view on derivatives. Since first day of August series expiry, we have seen that markets are continuing to trade very volatile with negative bias. And in yesterday trade also, we have seen that market players have squared off their long positions. As around 5.77 lakh shares were reduced in open interest and Nifty Futures premium decreased from 42.50 points to 39 odd levels. But PCR is increased from 0.98 to 1.01 indicating put option has added more number of shares than call option. Put option has added around 23.70 lakh shares in open interest whereas call option has added around 7 lakh shares in open interest which is clearly visible in the options activity. If we see uh, 5800 and 6000, 6100 call option has seen a good activity whereas on lower side 5700 followed by 5600 put option has seen a good activity. Yesterday also we have seen that selling was prevailed in the market and markets could not surpass the mark of 5800. Overall, our bias for the market is negative and we may see selling emerging in the market at higher levels. From intraday perspective, one can go short on Ultratech Cement with a stop loss of 1874.60. Thank you. Here are the important news and events that we are tracking today. First of all, the companies which will be announcing numbers today. Idea Cellular, we are looking at a net profit of about 446 crore. Remember friends, uh, telecom as a sector has performed extremely well. Bharti also. The India operations numbers were looking much better with some improvement in the core parameters. So idea has run up uh, quite a bit, uh, but overall number expectation is quite good. Landmark, we are looking at a net profit of about 137 crore. In case of Bank of Baroda, the pad that we are looking at is about 1151 crore, but it remains to be seen what really happens on the asset quality front, the provisioning and the slippage is part because we have seen that the PSU banking as a space, the numbers have been quite patchy. So that is something that the market will be keenly watching out for. And in case of Titan, we are looking at a net profit of about 182 crore. The petrol and diesel prices have been hiked again, mainly because of the rupee uh, weakening and the uh, crude price in the international market continues to remain at a higher level of about 106 to 107 dollars. Uh, this is definitely a bit of a relief uh, for the oil marketing companies. But given the pressure which is there on the rupee front, we don't think uh, uh, there's going to be too much of a upside in the oil marketing companies also uh, for some of the companies the divestment is being talked about so that will also keep pressure on the oil marketing companies so any pullback that you might see could be used uh, as shorting opportunities for companies 
like HPCL, BPCL and IOC. The government is looking at uh, relaxing some of the uh, norms to bring about more FDI and one of the things which is uh, uh, on the agenda for the government is the control in the FDI policy wherein they are trying to relax uh, some of these terms. Uh, so it remains to be seen what really uh, transpires in that meeting. Coming to the stock specific news, Aishar Motor is looking at launching at least 15 models of trucks and 8 models of buses over the next about 24 to 30 months and they are looking at increasing their market share from 4.5% to almost about 15%. Uh, so one can go long on Aishar Motor with a stop loss of 3422 and a target of about 3599. It's a little illiquid so stock so one should not be very aggressive but uh, this provides uh, some uh, technical pullback uh, in the stock uh, for about a couple of days. And uh, in case of IOC, the cabinet is looking at considering about 10% divestment. The meeting is lined up today. Uh, there might be some pullback in the IOC because of the diesel and the petrol price hike. But one can actually look at shorting uh, if there is any pullback in IOC stock today with a stop loss of 209 and a target of about 199 to about 197.5. That's it from all of us friends. Have a great trading session and see you tomorrow at the same time.